First off, in our number 10 spot, is going to be one of the most beautiful looking and beautiful sounding weapons in all of Destiny, dating all the way back to Destiny 1. This gun is of course the Outbreak Perfected. This gun is incredible. It just screams, I am an exotic primary weapon. It has everything you could possibly want. Of course, exotic primaries only lack one thing, damage, and that is going to be fixed with the launch of the Witch Queen. With the launch of the Witch Queen, a weapon like the Outbreak Perfected will be receiving a 50% damage boost. Of course, that coming from two different things, 40% because it is an exotic primary, and 10% because it is a pulse rifle. All pulse rifles will receive a 10% damage boost, and all exotic primaries will receive a 40% damage boost. That coming down to a 50% increase on a weapon like Outbreak Perfected. Now, 50% damage boost to the weapon itself. When it comes to the nanites or the Siva nanites that come after a kill, or in this case after damages or consecutive hits, those will also be receiving a 40% damage boost. Another thing on top of Outbreak is you will finally be able to obtain the catalyst for those of you that did not play during the zero hour or the time that the zero hour was in the game. The catalyst for this weapon is insane. It's incredible. It makes the nanites do more damage. So think about this. You're already getting a 50% damage boost to the weapon itself. Those nanites are getting a 40% because they're part of an exotic primary. You're also getting the catalyst. So think of it as 50-50, 50% damage increase to the gun itself, 50% damage increase to the nanites. This weapon is going to be so good. Not to mention it's incredibly good looking. It just, it screams exotic primary. It's easy to control, super easy to use. This is definitely gonna be a pickup for those of you out there that have not really given this weapon a try. You're gonna to wanna to look at this weapon again. Look at these Siva nanites tracking. They have insane tracking. Now apply the damage boost that they're gonna get in Witch Queen. And you can only imagine the damage this thing's gonna do. At number nine, we have, well, an underused hand cannon to say the least. It's also the only weapon in Destiny, in Destiny history to, for that sake, that has a purely supportive role. There's not much to say about Lumina, it lacks a lot, but what it is receiving is that uh, exotic primary damage buff, and it's receiving a couple of its own changes as well, a couple unique changes just to Lumina that should put it on par with their hand cannons. As most of you may know, Lumina feels pretty bad. Uh, this weapon has a few downsides. You can't hit fire it because you will shoot a noble round. It also just doesn't feel on par with every other 140 in the game. Hopefully the changes that Bungie's adding will bring it on par with other 140 hand cannons and the exotic primary boost will bring it up to also match the damage of those other weapons. But like I said, not much to say about this weapon. I do believe it'll be good, especially day one for that legend campaign with the supportive healing role that it provides. It can also be used to make a couple really cool builds paired with the uh, boot to the assembler on the warlock, but there's really not a lot to say about this weapon. I think it could be a pretty good weapon if all of the changes that are happening do affect it in the right ways. But that's number nine Lumina. Kind of a weird pick for number nine, but I think this weapon will pan out pretty nicely with the launch of the Witch Queen. Coming in at number eight. Big surprise here, we have Terrible. ha ha ha, more like Terrible. No, I'm kidding guys, that was such a funny joke, ha ha, hilarious, why are you guys not laughing? No, I'm kidding, I love Terra, but Terra is incredible. But while Terra is getting the exotic primary buff, it is also just like Lumina getting a set of its own changes, which are buffs. Big shocker here, I thought if anything Terrible would be nerfed. I think Terra <clears throat> is over the top, I think Terra is really, really, really good. Now, the changes it is getting is, well, you're going to be able to hold on to your stacks for the uh, Ravenous Beast. So, not only is this weapon going to be stronger, but this weapon's also going to be able to hold on to progress for its exotic perk, Ravenous Beast. As most of you know, when you use Terraba, you can charge it by getting damage or taking damage to get this perk called Ravenous Beast. Once you have Ravenous Beast, well, everything dies. You can probably see it in the background footage, but what these changes are going to do is allow you to keep those stacks or that damage or progress towards Ravenous Beast, allowing you to get Ravenous Beast a lot sooner. 
yeah, I mean, Terrible's insane, it only gets better. It's gonna be insane in Witch Queen. At number seven, we have Le Monarch, Le Monarch Hugh, whatever the fuck you wanna call it. Excuse my French, but, well, this is a bow. Not everybody loves bows, and I understand that. But, Le Monarch is special. Le Monarch is incredible. Think of it as Thorn with necrotic grips, except they're all in one and they're a bow. And they have unlimited range. And in Crucible, they do a lot of damage. And it's getting a 40% PvE buff. Yes, you might not like bows, but I'm telling you, bows, especially exotic bows, are going to be very good next season. Bows already one-tap pretty much every rank and file add or enemy in the game. So think about that with the 40% damage boost, plus the poison bonus of Le Monarch. I mean, come on, you, there's literally nothing going wrong here. This is going to be incredible. Le Monarch is such a good gun as is. Le Monarch's only going to get better. Why not give it a try? Why not give it a shot? But yes, Le Monarch, it pained me to put this thing at 7. I love this thing. Do I like it in Crucible? No. But we're talking PvE. This weapon is going to be so good. There is no reason I bet I should, like. There's no reason I shouldn't see more Le Monarchs in PVE. It's so good. It's gonna be even better. Please try it, guys. At number seven, Le Monarch. It like I said, it pained me to put it here, but I had to put it somewhere. So yes, there it is. And at number six, Sunshot. Sunshot's got a it's got a special place for me. Uh, the only 150 RPM hand cannon in the game. My first draft of this video, I did have Sunshot as a top 3 weapon, but I did have to move it down as I found some better options going into Witch Queen. That does not make Sunshot any worse than I'd say these next 5 weapons. I think Sunshot is still a top 3 weapon, I just think there are 5 other weapons with more uniqueness and that will have a higher upside than Sunshot. With that being said, Sunshot is incredible. It's got built-in firefly, except you don't need precision kill, it's just any kill. Not to mention, like I said, it's a boom, the only 150 RPM hand cannon in the game. It looks good, it sounds good, it feels good. Maybe that doesn't carry over into the PvP side of the game, but in PvE, I love Sunshot. The gun is so good, the gun has so much upside, it also has a catalyst that gives it so like such good boosts. The weapon has so many good things going for it. With the boost coming in Witch Queen, Sunshot is always going to be a very, very, very dominant option. This may or may not be the weapon I take into the Legend campaign, I'm not sure yet. I do definitely want to take an exotic primary into the campaign. With that being said, I'm sorry Sunshot, I love you, but I had to put you at the 6th spot. Coming in at number 5, we have Risk Runner. Risk Runner is already a very, very, very good, undeniably good ad clearing weapon. It can even be used in endgame activities such as the GM or Grandmaster, the Saber Strike. But we're not talking about that, we're talking about ad clearing and the best exotic primaries going into Witch Queen. And this is already one of the best ad clearing weapons in the game. You tack on the fact that, well, it's getting 40% more damage? This thing's gonna be nasty. The chaining damage, the arc overshield, not to mention you can proc that yourself by throwing a grenade at your feet. And you also add on the fact that we're gonna be fighting the hive who have light abilities. Guess what? One of the main light subclasses is arc or uh, light abilities is arc. So guess what? You're gonna have more chances to proc the perk on risk runner. You're gonna have more chances to get that magazine refill more chances to get that arc overshield and more chances to get that arc resistance. This is incredible guys. Risk Runner is only going to get better. It's already really good, but come on. Having the light abilities attack you from the hive, you're going to have Risk Runner proc all the time. It's going to be incredible. This is another great option for taking into the Legend campaign on day one because we don't know just how good and how powerful those uh, Lucent Hive are going to be. The Lucent Brute, we don't know. So taking this in would be a great option because you can get that arc resistance. With that being said, that is Risk Runner at number 5. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be great. Coming in at number 4, we have my personal number 1, 
the Graviton Lance. The Graviton Lance is, it's incredible. It really is, it's so good. It is a pulse rifle, so it's getting that 50% rather than the 40% because of both the buffs being combined. And I just thought about this. This is a void weapon. Void weapons are going to be able to synergize with void builds. And what are we getting in Witch Queen? Void 3.0. So I'm going to be able to use this incredibly buffed weapon that is Graviton Lance with Void 3.0. And I haven't even talked to you yet about how not only the weapon is getting that 50% damage boost, so is the after kill explosion. It's also getting that boost. It's getting that 40% because it is part of an exotic primary. So 50% damage to the gun itself is getting boosted. 40% is added to the Void Aftermath Explosion. And this is a void weapon that can be synergized with Void 3.0. This is my number one. I know it's number four, but this is my number one. I there's I see no downsides with this weapon. I see nothing but upsides and plus it, the gun's awesome. I love Graviton. I loved using it back in PvP when it owned the Crucible. I can't wait to use it. This is one of my two options going into the Legend campaign on day one of Witch Queen. Coming in at number three, we have Huckleberry. So those of you that have been playing Destiny 2 for quite a long time, I want you to think back to Recluse. Not the Recluse we have today, but the Recluse we had two years ago. The one that gave you literally everything. The one that melted literally everything. And then think of it as an exotic, and then you get Huckleberry. Huckleberry has everything you could possibly have to offer. It has Rampage. What else does it have? A refilling magazine on each kill. Also, an increased rate of fire of each kill. What could you not want when clearing ads? You enter a room of thrall, what do you need to do? You need to shoot a steady amount of damage without reloading, without having to stop. Huckleberry does exactly that. It is recluse on every level except for the fact that you need that you gotta kill with a different weapon, it boosts this weapon. All you need to do is get a kill with Huckleberry and it will buff Huckleberry. This thing shreds through ads. It's only gonna get higher damage. It gets a higher rate of fire. It gives you a full ammo refresh on kill. It has a catalyst. It's everything you could want. It is recluse. It is recluse, but exotic. And it is well deserving of the number three spot. Oh, number two, number two, number two, Trinity ghoul first and foremost i don't even want to talk about the gun i just want to come out individually and say thank you bungie thank you for finally making it so all these pricks that sit in thrallway with this gun equipped shooting over and over with a macro afk forming while they sleep thank god you can no longer do that and if you're one of those people guess what go to hell but getting on with Trinity Ghoul, Trinity Ghoul is going to be such a good weapon. Why? Well, the same thing I've said, what, eight times now this video. It is an exotic primary that is getting the 40% damage increase. And guess what? This weapon has an after kill effect. What is it? Chain Lightning. Think of Risk Runner, but better. Why is that better than Risk Runner? Because all you need to do is get a kill with this gun. And then guess what? You can do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. You can continuously shoot the chain lightning shot over and over and over. Why didn't it get number one? Well, because number one is just the best possible option out there, and there's no doubting it. It is on the throne for good reason. But let's stop talking about it, let's get to number one. Number one is here, and it is king, and it is on the throne for very, very, very good reason. It is bad juju. Why bad juju? Well, let's start with the obvious reason. It's an exotic primary getting that 40%, and it's an, it is a pulse rifle, so it's getting that extra 10%. There's 50% damage boost right there. What sets this aside from something like Graviton Lance or Huckleberry? Well, guess what? It is Huckleberry, except it's a pulse rifle. It gets Rampage on kill in the form of String of Curses. It also gets an ammo refresh on kill, just like Huckleberry. 
how does this if it's the same as huckleberry why is it better well when you get a kill with bad juju you get increased super energy on kill so you combine huckleberry's perk with bad juju's which is super energy on kill and you've got huckleberry but it's a pulse rifle receiving that 10 percent damage increase from the pulse rifle buff and you get increased super energy on kill Bad Juju is the best option by far. There's so many good things going for this weapon. You'll always have your super. You'll always have a damage boost. You'll always have ammo. You never have to reload. And there's a catalyst that makes Rampage last longer. I mean, what's there not to love? You can argue that Trinity Ghoul is one, but no. I think Bad Juju is one for very, very good reason. It deserves it. Just... It has so much going for it. It's already a good gun. It's only going to get better. It's only going to get more to it. And always having your super with Void 3.0, that sounds pretty fun with the new, or sorry, quote unquote, new subclasses we're getting with Void. But that is it for me. I'm just saying, this is my top 10 exotic primaries going into the Witch Queen. Well, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree. Definitely want to know what you guys are taking into that day one campaign. Or if you're doing the legend campaign like I am. Let me know what you're taking in. Because I'm definitely taking an exotic primary with me. But yes, that is it. Thank you guys for watching. If you make it this far, you are a god. You are a legend. You are literally Sabbathic herself. So, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.